The Underground Railroad was formed late in the 18th century, but was named and grew considerably in the 19th century. It was a network of people, mostly blacks, but many whites too, that helped assist slaves to freedom. The journey to freedom was extremely dangerous and physical. Being free took courage because slaves often had to leave the people they loved, had to travel mostly on foot, pursued by dogs and men looking to claim a reward, and they had to put their trust in other people to help them. Slaves who wanted to escape their current life of long work days and harsh punishments from overseers often turned to the Underground Railroad for help. The Underground Railroad was not tracks and cars, but people. These people worked together, but their knowledge of each other was limited. Most people involved only knew a few others who were involved and lived relatively close to them. People called conductors helped escape slaves on their journey. Most slaves traveled north to Canada where slavery was illegal. Fugitives stopped for rest and food at safe houses, which they referred to as depots or stations. Station masters were the people who provided their homes as depots or stations. The first challenge for the slave was to escape from his slaveholder. This was usually done at night. Because of the severity of punishment for running away, family members were often divided. While one slave may think it was worth the risk of being caught to get a chance at freedom, others were too scared to run. This was a source of sorrow and worry for the runners and the ones who stayed behind. Once the slave decided to run, he could not turn back. Harriet Tubman was a slave who escaped and became a conductor for the Underground Railroad. She helped about 300 slaves escape and travel north into Canada. She understood the danger of running away to be free, and fugitives who considered turning back were abruptly stopped. A change of heart was not an option because it put the whole group in danger. Harriet Tubman carried a gun and threatened to kill anyone who tried to return to slavery or who slowed the group down too much. Fugitive slaves usually traveled about 20 miles at a time. Sometimes slaves would travel in covered wagons with false bottoms from one station to another. Most traveling was done at night. Their routes often took them through water because bloodhounds could not track their scent through water. Sometimes they used boats and some clever fugitives hid in crates and stowed on boats or mailed themselves to northern states. Fugitive slaves needed money and clothing to disguise themselves and for some of the travel. Members of the Underground Railroad provided these needs. The people involved in the Underground Railroad had to communicate in codes and keep secrets. Southerners were furious that people were assisting slaves. Rewards were offered to people who returned slaves to their masters. A reward of $40,000 was offered for Harriet Tubman in 1856. Fugitive slaves had to rely on help from people they did not know. Oftentimes, the station masters were white, which caused anxiety for the runaways. Like the terms related to the Underground Railroad, there were other codes that the fugitives used. Spiritual songs like Follow the Drinking Gourd, which referred to the Big Dipper, and Wade in the Water were also codes that gave instructions to escaped slaves. Keeping secrets and communicating through them was characteristic of African culture. A story that has been passed through many generations in African American families identifies quilts as a communication tool for slaves. The Underground Railroad paired with escaped slaves used quilt patterns to relay messages to slaves preparing to escape. Quilts were often seen hung on a windowsill or across a fence. Slaveholders and overseers were not suspicious, but the story is that these quilts contained hidden messages. For example, the monkey wrench pattern meant gather tools for escape. Another was the North Star, a signal that meant prepare to escape and follow the North Star to freedom in Canada. Drunkard's Path was a signal to take a zigzag route. Fleeing slaves seen traveling south were not as likely to cause suspicion because escapees typically traveled north. A bear's paw pattern was meant to signal slaves to follow a mountain trail. A bow tie was a symbol to fugitives to dress in disguise. A shoe fly identified a person who could guide and help. The log cabin pattern indicated that it was necessary to seek shelter. The courageous slaves that took a chance and fought for freedom improved our country. The blacks and whites that worked together in the Underground Railroad took the first step towards racial equality. Though some people are racist today, American people have come a long way. Racism is frowned on today and is practiced mostly by ignorant, uneducated people. It is common today for people to live in harmony with neighbors of different races.